Yo guys, what's going on? This is Yorkie Man here. Welcome back to another episode of this Football Manager 2021 save here with Sevilla. And today, we're going to be taking on Osasuna. Yes, it took me a little while to figure out who we were going to take on next. We've decided with Osasuna. So you can see by the league table already that this season isn't going too badly to start. We're Osasuna in fourth. So if we beat them today, we leapfrog them, which would be massive for us. We just want to finish third or fourth this season. That's all we want to do. And just keep building this team, getting it better and better. There's one thing I've noticed with this team. Now, most of those players could be out on loan. Is that we're extremely old. We are really, really old. And when I was picking the Champions League group, it was just so evident that we struggled because there was only one player, which was Kunde, who got away with the under-21 scenario. Oh, oh, in fact, he didn't. It's under-20s now. It's not under-21s. It's under-20. So even Kunde had to be registered. So picking the Champions League group was frustrating. It was difficult, but we managed to get there in the end. But yeah, we're really old. We've got a huge chunk of players here that we're going to have to... I don't know, rotate and move out of the club eventually. A few of them that will be really difficult to replace will be Navas. I'm learning Fernando because he's been very good and Rakitic. They're going to be really hard for us to replace. And it's not going to be easy, but hopefully with the right kind of scouting, which we're doing now, we're starting to build up a bit of a shortlist, we'll be able to achieve that. There was a sale. Now, there were no more players brought into the club, as you guys know already. We got no money, but we did sell Sergio Esquadero. I, I like him. He's a decent player, but at the end of the day, he wasn't going to start ahead of Akuna because I like him. And we had uh, Karim Rekic as well as backup, so didn't necessarily need him. I thought for the price we were going to get for the age of 31, he's not going to get any more expensive. He's not going to get the game time this year. And I feel like at 31, if you're getting consistent game time, you're going to be all right. Your attributes are probably going to stay okay. He wasn't going to get it, so we sold him. We made about 1.8 million, did we? With a future fee rising up to about 2.8, oh, sorry, 2.4 with add-ons i was okay with that i think it's a decent deal and we got his wages off the books when we weren't really going to use him so a few games off camera and as you can see it's actually been pretty decent for us but if you didn't see the last episode go back and watch it we'll also take this moment to say guys hit subscribe if you're new around here also smash the like button i'd massively appreciate that now luke de jong scoring in the 97th minute against granada after roberto saldado scored for them was not my idea of how that game was going to go not at all but look Luckily for us, we got a late goal. We pick up a point there. In a home game against Granada, we need to be winning them. 3-2 then against a club Bruges. We actually went two goals up. We were cruising. We get in at half time. We do our team talk. We're all eating our lemons. Everybody's happy. We come out second half and Chong scores early doors. And that just puts us under tons and tons of pressure. Bas Dos then, another Dutchman, goes and scores a little bit later in the game. All of a sudden, it's 2-2. And I'm thinking, this is the team we have to beat in this group. We got way more effect. Offensive and Yusuf N. Naziri comes on the pitch, scores in the 98th minute of six added on. So I do feel like I FM'd FM a little bit, but it's about time he went our way, isn't it, boys? So yes, we do get a victory there against Bruges, but very lucky. We've been a little bit lucky while we try and figure out the system that we're going to play this season. Next up was Deportivo Alaves, and in a game that we absolutely dominated with an XG of 2.45, we really should have scored more. Rakitic missed a penalty as well, which was frustrating, but at the end of the day, we pulled off the result. We got a 1-0 victory, and we performed fantastically as well in the game to get a victory. So that filled me with confidence going into the Leipzig game. And of course, when we went 1-0 up in the Leipzig game, thanks to Munayir starting up top for the first time, because I haven't been overly impressed with De Jong. We end up losing 3-2 in a game that was extremely even. The only difference was their ability to score more goals than us. We actually come out with this with better XG. We did what I want, though. Our passing was up there. We was better with our pass completion. We were better at our tackles one as well, which was really interesting to see. But in the end, it came down down to individuals this game and let's be honest they do have better individuals this was always going to be a difficult game but in the home tie I really wanted to pick up the victory at least a draw I was very frustrated we had several good chances towards the back end of the game that we didn't manage to put away and this time we couldn't make the comeback unfortunately we lost to RB Leipzig it's a big blow for us in the Champions League. I'm already confined to the fact that we'll probably get Europa League again because if you look at the Leipzig squad and you look at our squad, it is better. Also, Kunde had a shocker, which doesn't help because he is one of our better centre-backs. And we're playing a lad called Alcedo at left-back because both left-backs, miraculously, after I sold our third-choice left-back, decide that they're going to get injured. So we've been playing this young lad. He, do you know what? He's done all right, to be fair to him, but we'll be happy when we don't have to play him and Akuna and Ricky. 
pitch is back. So that leads us to today's game, boys, where we will take on Osasuna, and I'm quite confident that we can get a win. This is what we've been playing. It's a custom Tiki Taka. Uh, there's still work to be done on this. I am not sold on it yet. I'm not used to playing one where we only have one attacking duty, and it's in the center of the park. There's work to be done on this, but we are producing some fantastic football. And I think the more and more the lads get to know this, this is key for me. We are not familiar at this yet. The more... For, is, is it not going to show me? Okay, so the more familiar we get with the tactic, the far better. The more um, of these, the more of these connections. I, I can't think of the word for it right now, which is absolutely ridiculous. But the more of these partnerships that we form, the better the team are going to play. Especially in a formation where we do demand very good, tight-knit passing in tight confined spaces but wreckage is just about fit so he's going to come back into this one i've dropped kunde after that terrible performance let's see how we get on now we don't particularly have the players to play this yet but i want these guys to get to grips with this and learn it as quickly as possible we probably won't play this against the bigger sides but we'll definitely play it against quote unquote the smaller sides i don't know what's the sooner or fourth but sides that we feel like we can beat we're going to play this formation and see how we get on. This is our biggest problem at the minute, is the familiarity of the formation. You know, seven... I, I really do think that it's so important that you have that familiarity, that your players know your formation and what you're expecting of them, especially if it's a formation that is quite demanding in terms of technical ability. We want a lot from our technical players in this, and we have a lot of technical players, but if they're not all on the same hymn sheet singing from the same hymn sheet, isn't it, Yorkie? Then it's not going to work. We will go to 3D for you in this one today, boys. I have, of course, been playing. I don't want to play director. I'm going to play sideline and see how we get on with that as Gomez is taking an opportunity here early doors. We'll have to slow it down a little bit. I'll still play 2D off camera while we're working out the kinks. But I think we're slowly getting there. I'm quite happy with some of the performances. Not necessarily the results, but the performances have been very good recently from the boys. And that's the key for me. We need to be making sure that we're putting out good performances and this is the key stat for me possession and pass completion has been superb for the majority of games so far so i want to keep that in check we are susceptible on the break which is a problem but the more physical stronger and quick center backs we get the better it's going to be for us as we win the ball back there a campos fernando we are doing short throw-ins now i haven't touched the corners yet i'm quite happy with where they are with the default money here or campos rakitic Gomez, Munai, blast it over. He's got his first goal for me very recently. I'd like him to score more. What we've got to remember as well is we're away here. And I do feel like when you're away, it does go against you. 70% possession now at the moment. As the clock ticks on, not much is happening. We're at the 35th minute here, and it's going to be attack for Osasuna. And that's a great ball, and it should be 1-0. I don't think that was offside. It wasn't offside. This is our biggest issue at the moment. We don't seem to play the offside trap too well, and playing such a high line has caused us problems. So we've been better at going forward than we have in recent games, but we've been quite poor at being being caught out especially if they've got some quick players i feel like my defenders just aren't smart enough to track the opposition forwards and that's been a bit of a problem for us as we hit half time here and there's been two shots on target it's been a very dull game as a live com goes we should have brought the leipzig one i'm going to try by not using the offside trap see if that helps us a little bit i think sometimes the offside trap can tell you players to if they're not organized and familiar with using the offside trap one will always leave the player on side and it leads to all kinds of problems our biggest issue here at the moment is we're not creating enough which is making me think maybe we should tweak this just a touch but we have the ability in the squad go on a campos monaia wreckage now decent position for him out wide he has loads of time to put the ball in and it's just not good enough he's not the best of left backs we'd be better with Acuna there and that has led to a counter-attack and we do commit bodies forward and this counter-attack torres oh it's fantastic and there we go we're one nil down in a game that really we haven't played too badly in but that counter-attack and it all stems from wreckage losing the ball so with wreckage losing the ball there we need to kind of consider how we knock that out of him how we get him to stop doing that because this is not good enough considering the performance so far it's not been good enough we need to figure out a way to stop him from making those mistakes as i'm absolutely chucking my arms around out wide we're a better team than that and again it's going to take a while for the boys to get used to this formation when you're playing away against well drilled drilled teams like osasuna seem to be 
It's always going to be an issue. Can we get a goal back here, though? It's not a terrible ball played in, but again, it's not fantastic. And it comes to absolutely nothing. Still only the one on target, and that's my biggest issue right now. I think we're going to swap stuff around as Torres has an opportunity there. So we've tweaked here a little bit, and we're going to try and get a little bit more from the boys. I'm going to tell them to play far more aggressively because I'm, I'm not very happy with the contribution of the team today. It's definitely not being good enough and it needs to improve in current games and future games as well we're going to actually go to a, a cam so we've changed it up a little bit now we've got oscar playing at cam and let's just see if we could try and get ourselves back into the game i thought that would have created a little bit more but it doesn't look like it it's been a woeful performance from the boys again really is it's just the hit and missness of, of this familiarity. The guys don't really know whether they're coming or going, and we're not getting the rub of the green at the moment. And that does always happen when you're trying to train a new tactic. Let's bring on Pegla. We're also going to take off Rakitic for Vasquez, and that'll be the last change we make. And we'll just see if there's anything they can do here right towards the end of the game. But it's not been a good match of football, and it's not been good from us, really. We've made changes and offered absolutely nothing with those changes, and that will be full-time now, I imagine, as, wow, we've got well over if we score here this is ridiculous or campos now loses out to it it's just it's not good enough from some of our better players it's not good enough and that'll be the result we do lose to osasuna it was even but evenly a terrible game in which osasuna just got the better rub of the green and that's exactly what happened against leipzig and until the boys are drilled and know this tactic better which we are training now we're training it aggressively to get these boys to be familiar with it but until they get to that stage we're gonna be susceptible to results like this we're gonna go away now to man city which initially makes me think that's three losses on the bounce i'm not happy with that performance and that puts us in a bit of a dangerous position position because three in a row on fm is not a good place to be at you really don't want to be in in the position of three three in a row and we dominated the game but did nothing with it again and i think when you don't have that fluidity your boys aren't familiar with the way you're asking them to play you do you are wasteful we've got a lot of possession and done absolutely nothing with it in that game and that's probably the most frustrating side of things i like what we're doing with this i just don't like that they're not familiar now this for me this little bar here is usually round about this area usually round about that area and you're okay with it I, not fine this is really poor familiarity this is really poor and the boys don't really know what they're doing for some strange reason Rakitic doesn't now we could change that around but again for some strange reason nobody knows how to play roaming playmaker in this formation so maybe we change that and the stuff that needs to be fixed, the stuff that needs to be fixed, and we need to work on it because at the moment, we're not playing to our strengths. But we'll do that off camera. Anyway, boys, thank you very much for the support. As per usual, I appreciate it. If you're new around here, hit subscribe. I've said it once already. I'll say it again. Smash the like button. We'll be back in the next episode. I'll just do a similar situation. We might play the second Man City game. We might play the Circle Bruges game. Uh, sorry, the Club Bruges game. That makes more sense. But anyway, guys, take it easy. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next one.